Admiral Parks is the regional CEO of the American Red Cross. Admiral Parks. Thanks, Jim. Good, good morning, everybody. I'd like to thank the uh, USO for this wonderful opportunity and the privilege to be out here today with all of you. And uh, before I start, I just want to thank uh, all of our uh, soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen for your service to our country. Not only our active duty, but uh, our retirees and our veterans. Thank you so much for uh, all your service. And to our uh, men and women in uh, uniform, our brothers in arms with uh, the police and fire department and first responders, thank you for what you do. This is a special day, an important day for you as well. So I thank you for that. You know, it's, today is that special day. It's been known now as, uh, by proclamation as Patriot Day. It's also by proclamation a, a national day of service and remembrance. How fitting that we would be out here today. When I was asked to speak, I was asked to talk about uh, where I was on 9-11. I think all of us can probably think back to where we were that uh, day in uh, September 2011. I was the commanding officer of a 270-foot Coast Guard uh, cutter uh, stationed in Portsmouth, Virginia. We were ironically in a shipyard at the time in Norfolk, which uh, I was walking through the mess deck of the ship and I saw, it was about 8.45 or about 8.50 at that time, and I saw a bunch of guys standing on the mess deck, just watching TV, middle of the work day. I was like, what's going on here? So, being me, I walked over and said, what's going on here? What are you guys doing? And uh, I thought they were watching a movie, because there were the you know, twin towers, one of them on fire. And uh, they said, a plane flew into the World Trade Center. And I stood mesmerized looking at that, and I said, is this real? And they said, yes, it just happened. And while we were standing there, 9.03, the second plane hit, and immediately realized that this was no coincidence, we were certainly under attack. And, you know, for us, we were, we had offloaded all our ammo, we had no anchors, we couldn't, we couldn't get the ship underway if we wanted to. You know, engines were torn apart, so we were kind of, you know, sitting ducks there in, in Norfolk, the you know home of the largest naval base uh, in the world, with nuclear carriers and nuclear subs right uh, right around the corner. But uh, everybody sprung into action, and for the Coast Guard, that was a, a huge time for us. Uh, all of our major cutters deployed to start protecting uh, the ports and uh, deployed to places all around the country. And we pulled our ships in from the Caribbean and other places to uh, to really take uh, that Homeland Security mission that was one of the starting founding reasons for the Coast Guard became uh, the forefront for us for uh, the foreseeable future. And you know, I was asked also to talk about what I saw change. And I think one of the things I saw change the most was our entire government uh, had the most significant reorganization in the Department of Homeland Security when that was formed shortly thereafter in the uh, Homeland Security Act of 2002, which created the department and brought together 22 different agencies including our Coast Guard that moved from the Department of Transportation into the Department of Homeland Security. One of the other things that all of us have experienced is the formation of TSA, the Transportation Security Administration, which uh, was, was a direct result. And then I had the opportunity to you know, experience another thing that happened there when the uh, United States Northern Command uh, was founded. You know, NORAD, uh, which was a binational command out of Colorado that had been in existence for more than 50 years, actually responded to the 9-11 attacks. Uh, fighters out of uh, Otis Air Force Base actually flew um, in response. But that, uh, that became a uh, dual command. NORAD became part of U U.S. Northern Command, and that was uh, founded out in uh, Colorado to be responsible for the defense of the homeland. It became uh, one of the ten combatant commands in the Department of Defense, a joint command. And I got the privilege of serving out there uh, as my f first uh, assignment as a flag officer. But I would tell you the thing, as I think back to Remembrance Day, you know, as, as I think about this day of remembrance, and I think back to what uh, I reflect on most, is I think about as I drove to the ship on September 10th, on Monday, September 10th, drove down the street like nothing happened. On September 12th, I drove down that same street, and I saw something remarkable. Flags flying in every home. Every home had a flag on it. And what I noted was the incredible display of patriotism, the incredible display of civility, unity, 
and that uh, feeling that we had then, probably not since the Second World War did our country come together in a way that it did then. When I think back to uh, this day, that is what I remember, that is what I long for 14 years later, that we don't lose sight of that, that opportunity to come together. And I'm reminded of the words of Abraham Lincoln, who said, my dream is of a place and a time where America will once again be seen as the last best hope on earth. And as I think back to 9-11, I think that that's something we need to all keep in mind. Think about how we felt on September 12th. And that's, that's really what this day is about. Remembering, and I, I want to commend the USO, and it's fitting that we're out here and as a member of the, the Red Cross, the American Red Cross that works so closely uh, with our service members. It is just natural for us to have a partnership with this wonderful organization, the USO, who has uh, done such an incredible thing for so many service members around the globe. Uh, it is fitting that we're out here, and I thank you for your time. I thank you for your service, and I just wish all of us a great day here. God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral.